Hello everyone and um, thanks for joining us on this particular track um, which is around gaining visibility and control of your 365 and Azure environments with Quantum. Uh, just a couple of introductions before we kick off. Um, I'm Dan Cranebrink and I'm responsible for the uh, business development of our services proposition here at Bytes. Uh, and I'm joined by my colleague Harold, who um, is the product owner of our quantum platform and is deeply involved in its development um, and future direction. Um, just before we get into the detail, before we start, um, this is a uh, or there is a live Q&A session following this presentation, but please feel free to submit questions via the chat um, as we go along. Um, we will do our best um, to cover them within the Q&A session um, um, following this video. Um, so before I hand over to Harold to dive into the platform, I really just wanted to provide a high level introduction to Quantum for those who perhaps are not quite so familiar um, um, with this technology. Um, Quantum is by its own IP. It's been developed over the past uh, five or six years uh, and really started out life as a way for our customer or, or as, as a way of assisting our customers respond to the, the growing challenges associated um, with exponential growth in cloud consumption and, and spend. Um, and with this spend set to continue to grow at circa 40% year in year over, over the coming um, years, um, those challenges are only going to continue. Um, and they are wide ranging um, in their nature with a uh, lack of visibility, um, unpicking complex cost models, options and analytics, um, cross charging across different business units um, or indeed brands, um, tracking the significant investment that's been made in hybrid benefit and um, reserved instances, and of course driving and changing user behavior to ensure you know, you, they are taking advantage of this investment in Microsoft technology. And we are continuing to invest in heavily in the quantum platform um, and of course the related services that um, that it underpins speak. Um, so hopefully as you'll notice and you'll get to see today a number of these significant enhancements that we've made to the quantum Azure platform um, and I know that Harold is really keen to um, dive into that side of the platform and show you some of those enhancements in real life. Yeah, thanks very much Dan and um, looking forward to the session and um, we've got a lot of exciting things to talk about here. Uh, what I'd like to cover is both the 365 side and the Azure side, um, and I'm just going to talk high level first and, and give you a bit of an overview of what the platform does um, across both environments, and then jump in and, and, and show you some stuff. You know, it's always good to show the actuals and you can see what's happening in our platform. So just first to mention, you know, um, Microsoft has a complex um, offering. There is a lot uh, around licensing. There is a lot around expenditure and costings um, and how you pay for things in Azure, how you pay for things in Office 365. Um, and today's world as cloud has really moved to being more about identities and less about devices. You know, um, the old SAM world, you know, where you manage your desktops and if you lock them in a cupboard and they were secure, uh, those, those worlds are gone. You know, everybody's been working from home in COVID and that type of thing. And it's really about managing the people and other types of identities in that world. So number one, uh, from a 365 point of view, the focus is very much around identities and the management of those identities and how do we make that more secure? So there's a lot of things we need to know about it. Um, we need to know, for example, who your joiners levers are, number one. Um, and we need to be able to give you business information as opposed to technical information. So it's very key for us in the platform to, to have built our own AI tagging engine. Um, so what we do with that is we may read your Azure Active Directory, we may read um, your Azure tags, um, but we almost certainly want to improve them because a financial controller wants to see data differently to an IT admin, to a business lead. Um, you know, so everybody wants to see data in a different way. So we want to make sure it can be presented in the way that they want to see it um, and also that they can see it, you know, so that they don't need to log in as an administrator because unfortunately in the in the Microsoft world, um, those jewels of information are, are primarily held by, by administrators. Um, so we want to expose that. Um, I'll mention as well that throughout the platform, when I get into demos and that, everything we do is read-only. I will talk through one exception, but you never have to worry about us writing back and changing things in your environment. It's absolutely read-only. Even the onboarding process is read-only, and it takes us five minutes to get you into the platform. So there's key areas the platform covers around cost, obviously, that number one, let's get rid of any of that wastage, um, and let's make sure you know your contracts are tightly managed. 
um, that you have financial transparency in those contracts, you know who to allocate the cost to, and anybody who's challenging those costs or want to see more details, they can log in and, and see that information. Um, we want to make sure there's an AI engine that gives you recommendations and tells you where you can optimize, uh, whether it is in, in licensing, whether it is in Teams adoption, you know, um, Teams calling, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then very key to that as well is identity management. Um, again, you know, I've mentioned identity is so, so fundamental to the way we do licensing today and the way we secure things today. So we have a number of really exciting areas in there. We've got our modern workplaces dashboards where we, we will tell you who's automatically working, or automatically will tell you who's working from home, um, who's in the office, how many homes have you got, how many offices do you have, um, and who are the telcos servicing um, those locations? And then what are people doing when they work from home? So in other words, it's really good to know if they really like to work on an iPad or maybe they would prefer to work on a laptop and how do they run Teams usually? Um, how do they run MS Office usually? So all of that kind of information sits in our modern workplaces dashboards. Um, the identity health automation is principally around cleaning up that data, making sure you understand business context because we have these things called zombie accounts. You know, everybody thinks they know who their joiners levers are, but actually they don't know which what, 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 what those accounts are for. That's not mine, right? So we've got to make sure everything is covered from an account point of view, from an identity point of view. Uh, we need to understand what's a printer, you know, what is a distribution list? Um, because unfortunately they get used, you know, um, ac across the board. Um, so a big piece of that is understanding your joiners levers and that. Of course, once you've optimized your environment, you really want to make sure your return on investment is maximized. So there is a lot of dashboards around adoption of the, the Microsoft 365 suites. Um, you know, Teams Insights gives you a lot more proactive um, views on, on, on what's happening in the Teams world, including where you've got core quality issues and that. Um, you may want to see office adoption. You may want to see your power platforms. You know, we cover a number of areas. And of course, you know, nowadays security and governance, it's, 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 it's the piece that we all worry about every day. So we make your life a bit easier in that and look at some of the really fundamental risks that your organization could have, um, give you basic SOX type service dashboards, um, and certainly really get to grips with your shadow IT applications and also your uh, administrators and what are they doing? So you've got complete independence governance on that. So as we move into this your world, um, in many ways, there's very similar categories, but instead of us talking about identities, and, and of course, identities are very important to Azure because you need to know which identities are managing your resource, so they blend into each other, right? But you're now talking more about resources. And so going into the Azure side of the platform, um, a slightly different but similar focus. So certainly on the financial side, number one, let's optimize and make sure you're not wasting any of these resources. Um, so we've got a wonderful offering in there, um, many different categories of optimization. Let's get you down into a slick world that you need. Part of that is also to understand how your business functions in that world. So let's not talk about VMs only, or let's not talk about networks only. Let's talk about your SAP production environment. Let's talk about your high risk systems. Let's talk about your East Asia regions systems, or maybe, you know, what is UK responsible for? Um, however you want to tag that, right? Again, back to that tagging I mentioned initially. So we can tag your things every night, every day, um, automatically. And it just gives you that complete financial transparency, procurement transparency, um, IT transparency. So when we start talking about resource management, um, again, you know, you need to really understand fundamentally which resources you have, what's coming in on a day-by-day -day basis. Um, has somebody exposed, for example, on a security perspective, have they exposed uh, ports to the internet that you weren't aware of? Um, how has the growth of your SAP platform happened, i.e. technically what has been brought into that? Because if you've got business context around your resources in Azure, you are going to be able to control it better you are going to be able to secure it better and put different levels of focus. A great example comes through in our security and governance area. So, you know, it's, it's one thing to say that you are not FedRAM compliant or you're you ISA 27001 compliant across your entire multi-million dollars worth of investment in Azure. I think what's more important is let's, let's get that into more actionable insights. Let's understand where is my risk in my high risk systems? Where is my risk in my e-commerce front end platform or in my HR platforms from a GDPR point of view? So we really focus in the correct areas and not try and secure everything, which, which we all know is almost impossible for us. None of us have the resources to do that.
So it's a great offering in the security and governance side. You'll see it covers it from a security point of view and also compliance and governance to, to various regulatory standards. And I think that's about all I wanted to do on the, on the PowerPoint side of things. Um, and probably good then to jump straight in and, and, and show, you, show you Quantum. So I have logged into Quantum. Um, and as you see, I am on the overview screen. Um, if I can just confirm maybe from, from Dan that you can see the screens. Yep, we're all good, Harold. Thanks, Dan. Um, right, so what we have here is an overview of Azure, Office 365. Um, if you're on, on both sides of the platform, you will see this overview. And these are just simple things. You know, the red typically marking on the Azure world. You've had a cost increase in virtual machines and networking. So when we dig into it, we'll go into that. This is, of course, a demo environment. It needs to be live. So we build a demo environment where we can kind of do live things. It's a smaller environment than you would see in your world. Um, but certainly, we'll show you the capability as part of it. And on the Office 365 side, you know, in both cases, you can straight away start seeing um, any recommendations um, that you have. Now, I'm going to jump into Office 365 first. You'll see on the left is menus. Any one of these menus can be turned on or off. Um, so you may want, for example, when you click on the Office 365 side, there's an area there called C-level dashboards. Maybe you want C-levels to log into, into Quantum and only see that dashboard. So you have that full control and capability as to what you allow people to see. Again, everything that is here is read-only. Um, we can't destroy anything in your world or put your world at risk through read-only. So I'm going to go into Office 365 overview. And what you'll see is we, we, we have two parts to the engine. Um, so we have a UI and it's typically administrators and that might go into that, but far more interesting, of course, um, this is the business world. So when we give you an overview, um, you will see high summar highly summarized um, items here. Every one of those, there will be other areas you can drill into the details of them. Uh, and you can right click in these various analytics and drill down, um, but you'll have capability to go into all of them in a much higher level of detail. So this is just an example screen. You, you know exactly how many accounts your organization has, how many of those enabled, how many of those on Office 365, um, et cetera. Again, high level. You will see some non-defines in that. That's just because it's our demo environment. We unfortunately have to mask user IDs and things like that. So every now and again, you'll see the uh, unidentified. But you maybe want to have a view of your Office applications very quickly. Um, what are people using the Office Suite? Of course, very important to us. And maybe Teams nowadays is very important. And in this case, there's 83 adopted users of Teams. Um, and we can see desktop, mobile, uh, and web. So you can see 35 users on web using Teams, quite high actually. Um, you know, so I get to understand, you know, maybe there's an option there to give people web only because it seems to be growing and we've certainly seen a trend of, of increase in web usage. Or maybe right down, you know, I'm just flicking in, um, look at security, for example. You can see just that high level summary of your administrative events that are happening, how many password resets they have, your top administration categories. Um, at bottom right, you know, how many user administrators do you have? How many of them have got MFA enabled? And how many company administrators don't have MFA? There's one there, no MFA and as a company administrator. We're talking about an account here that potentially could could put your your company at massive risk and delete your entire environment. Um, so um, different areas that we'll dive into, and I'm going to start going into some of those areas now. So I'll start off on the FinOp side, um, and I think number one, <laughs> it's a real battle for us to understand contracts. Of course, we're experts in understanding these contracts, but we can't expect you to be experts in it. Um, so we just simplified it for you. And here is the typical Microsoft EA. It's a three-year EA. You can see when the timelines run. Um, we're in July 2021 to June 2022. I can see how much I've committed. Um, and very famously, that number over there, that uh, true up cost that normally surprises us at the end of the year um, when we have to renew with Microsoft. Um, oh, by the way, you know, the administrators assigned a number of licenses due the year, during the year, and uh, there's your surprise that you also need to true up on. It's never a surprise in this world. Um, that gets updated every single day. Um, so you're always on top of what your, your um, uh, true up is going to be. So you can also see the view, of course, by finance and by by quantities. There's a number of other areas. You can see the uh, reservations coming through, any purchase orders you might have with us, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not going to go into that. Fundamentally, what I'd like to get into now is just show you how the engine optimizes your environment. Um, so we have a recommendations engine, and I'll take you just for a change into the UI side of the platform. So 
we have, I think, around about 30 um, AI learned rules now uh, that we can tell you where you can save. And th I'm talking here about relatively simple saves. You know, there's other areas of the platform in the planning section, for example, where maybe you want to understand you've bought some E5s, but you're not using the E5 component of it. You're only using up to E3. We'll tell you all that kind of information as well. But this is the fairly simple stuff. Um, so, for example, maybe accounts could be converted to shared mailboxes, right? Great. Um, why is that? Well, maybe somebody's assigned a license to a distribution list, or maybe you've got some domestic dial plans on Teams or something like that, and people aren't using them, right? Really difficult to understand um, normally. So we'll we'll highlight that to you. Or ex using Exchange only. Maybe that's a printer. It's just sending and receiving emails. We understand that. We understand the behavior of these accounts. Um, a very big one um, in almost all companies that we've seen. Um, and across this board, incidentally, you know, we across the board here, we'll save you somewhere between 18 and 37 percent based on our research. And there's some high liars and low flyers uh, on average, 18 to 37 percent, which which kind of aligns with market industry as well. You know, up to 40 percent cloud wastage in general. But if we look at inactive users here, um, we have an engine that will automatically calculate inactive identities, right? Uh, the identities have not been used for 30 days, but across many things, not just not logged in, right? Have they used any of the 365 license capabilities? Um, have they used any other applications on the internet, not necessarily Microsoft? Um, we will tell you that. And when I look in that, I can go and look at the details and it'll give me the details of them and I can commit the change. So let me talk a little bit about that. So we have the capability for you to automatically from the platform, take that information and then automatically remove these licenses. So what the platform has done is it's pushed me into our users tab um, and you'll see at the bottom right, there's 30 of these and I've got this filters button. And what you'll see is that what it's done is it's selected all users that are non-active, identities that are non-active with licenses and it's given me a list. But I maybe I'm in a large company, the list is still too extensive. I need a few people to look at this. I can go and take advantage of our tags and, and you can create any kind of tag you want. But let's say, for example, I want to filter this by country and I want to look at the UK only. And there I have a list of all of the users in the UK uh, filtered and I can either press the, the, the Excel export and I've got a CSV to send on to administrators. Or if I want, I can select the accounts. I can commit this, I can commit the change. And it'll ask me, do you want to add or remove licenses? What licenses are assigned against? Then I might select a few. And if I say remove selected, it'll ask me, are you sure? Um, and then it'll email to somebody if they want to see this, but it'll go into a basket, right? In the administrative section for administrators that evening to review them, approve them. And ultimately, a an administrator will log in as a one-off authentication and remove the licenses from the user and remove the users from any group groups that have been assigning these licenses. So a great way to provision I'm not going to go into devices, maybe groups. It's worth just quickly looking at on the analytics side. Um, you'll see uh, very key for all of us is Teams groups. So if I select Teams groups here, I can see all the Teams groups on the sides and I can see owners, members, external members, how much SharePoint storage is being used, how much emails they're sending. So it's very quick and easy. These red ones, these yellow ones, I probably want to remove them. They've not been used. So we'll color them for you as well. Very quick and easy to get into your groups. Um, I mentioned joiners levers. So what we give you here is a view of your company since it was onboarded, uh, what the joiners levers are. And you might want to drill down and say, right, how does that look in the UK? And maybe once you're in the UK, maybe you want to look at different business divisions and there's account aging below. So a lot of areas for you to look at from from uh, analytics perspective. Also to mention, we have a tagging engine. Um, you'll see it on the left there. It's called alerts, sorry, alerting engine. Um, you can go and set alerts and say, automatically tell me when you think is a lever or a joiner. And then maybe you want to email that to HR. So HR has got an, uh, a visibility of this at any one stage. Of course, once you've made the saves, you've made the uh, improvements, you want to look at adoption. So we've got extensive uh, adoption reporting here. Um, you'll see it across the board, um, whether it is in your sort of collaboration suite, in the office suite, maybe in the power platforms, storage. I'll click on one just quickly for to show you. Here is Teams, for example, and maybe I want to look at Teams usage by a particular business area in the consultancy division. Um, and then I can go into detailed views or detailed country views, and I can actually see the trends because it's, it's one thing understanding um, that you've got Teams uh, capability and yes, collaboration is okay across the company or it's not. The next levels down, you can drill down and say, right, I've got an issue with collaboration in my marketing division um, in, in France. Um, so you can drill down with all of the other subscreens that go into this. Teams Insights, of course, 
great growth area for us. Number one, you want to look at your call quality. Um, you have that capability straight away. I've clicked in. I can see there's a poor call there. I can click into the call. I can see what kind of uh, headsets they're using, what the system is, how it's connecting. It's wired. Um, and I can look at the round trip delays. I can see obviously that's too high. That's probably causing the core quality issues here. I can see jitter latency. So it's very quick and easy to troubleshoot calls. But more, exper more important, maybe I want to look across the company and understand where my issues are. Now, normally you would have the countries listed here just because in the demo version, we, we hide the identities. We can't associate them with departments. But I might want to look at all my poor calls and I can go into the poor calls and in one of them I can hover over. And in many cases, I can drill through and go and look at, for example, the PSTN calling as part of that or look at the participants, look at the organizers, how many external users. There's a whole suite of information available, including what are your PSTN dialing, your, your succession border controllers, how, what call dialing is in that area, um, a whole suite to go through in the modern workplaces. Um, so in, in modern workplaces, I've mentioned before, really strategic area for us as well. Um, in this environment, we will tell you automatically who's working from home, how many homes have you got, what cities are they in, how many offices have you got, what are the identified locations, um, and what telcos do they use. So we will automatically, with that five minute on board you did in the beginning, we will tell you all of your ISPs globally, including those people working from home, all of your landlines, um, your dedicated links, your mobile providers, and you can of course use that for various bits of information. You want to understand criticality of servers with my traders, or maybe I want to uh, give a, a, a package to home workers. Who's the best uh, company to go and deal with? Oh, I can see maybe 60% of my users on Virgin. Let me go and strike a deal with Virgin because it'd be easiest to cut over users onto a, a special Virgin deal for my company. So um, a lot of great information in here about your end users. Uh, a number of other areas, um, I'm not going to have time to go through them, but of course, key for everyone is security. Um, your help desk can use this. Again, it's read-only. They don't need to be administrators, but you can see all the outages that are going on at the moment in your environment. Um, and maybe I can even do it over a month and I can see how many outages I've had in the last month or in the last three months, six months. Alerts, you know, this has become really key. The Microsoft has a lot of dashboards, um, and this is just sucking the information straight out of uh, Microsoft now. It's very really, uh, near live. Um, so what you have is a lot of information across a number of different dashboards. Um, and I'll, I'll show you here, you know, from Azure Security Center, from Information Protection Center, Microsoft Cloud App Security Center, Office 365 Security and Governance. You can, of course, filter on any of them and you can see all the alerts coming through um, and you can make sure somebody's been tackling them or they're resolved. Do they need to be looked at in further detail? So basic SOC service. And of course, these are the kind of services we can help you with as well. If you want some independent SOC services and things like that, um, you've got all of that in there. And last but not least, um, you've got an, a whole suite of security information here all around your administrators. What are they doing? MFA, who has MFA, who doesn't? All your external users, what are they doing? Um, your shadow IT, understanding all the applications that they're busy using. Maybe you want to look at things like conditional access policies and that. Um, and it's a really exciting area for us. Uh, you know, we're not just about, um, Quantum's not just about what you see today. Every month we release new features, and especially in the security side, there is an extensive suite of, of, of new features coming out. Um, now, I think high level, that's what I wanted to cover on 365. Um, and then I'll just jump into the Azure. I'm going to give you a quick flash through of Azure. From a tooling perspective, it works very similar. Um, but in the Azure side, of course, um, I'm going to jump straight into maybe the overview again of the comp of the company of your Azure environment. This is exactly that. You can see your spend. It doesn't matter how you've been onboarded, whether it's CSP, EA, pay as you go, MSDN subscriptions. It's all covered. I get a straight view very quickly. I can analyze where did my primary cost come from that month. You know, I can see most of my costs are in the FinTech test system and with the customer services division. Or if I look at my VMs, I can see the trend compared to previous months on those different subscriptions. So across the board, yeah, you've got a lot of areas to drill into. But, you know, maybe you're in procurement and you really want to get a good view of your Azure world um, as procurement. And um, nothing better than showing you uh, across any timelines you want. Maybe I want to do this across the last one year. Um, so I can update the data. I see the yearly map here. 
And at any one stage, again, I can hover over these costs on a rolling basis. Um, maybe I want to see what was it that caused this 1.54K increase over there. Oh, it was an application gateway that was implemented in the field services team. Right, so it's so quick and easy to historically show financial transparency. Right, so if you're using um, these particular lines of business to do your cost allocations internally, for example, uh, I did show you previously, you can export an Excel, send that off to financial control, but customers can log in and then go and understand why did my bill in field services increase from 0.11K to 1.54K between July and August? And I can drill down, drill down, drill down and get to understand that. I maybe want to look in more detail at a monthly basis and see the impacts, you know, uh, from different angles. How did my, my cloud management go up? Um, you know, compared to previous. So just different kinds of views of getting to understand how your costs look. And maybe you want to do this maybe by country instead. Um, sorry, by cust uh, line of business, sorry, on the Azure side. I uh, just clicked on there. So if I just deselect those. Um, by lines of business, you could maybe filter this. And so you could get different views uh, coming in across the board. You've also got a lot of forecasting capability. We use a number of uh, cognitive services here. So you might have seasonal forecasts. You can see we've had this trend of increase in July 21. So you kind of expect that cost to, in terms of seasonal to start going up next year around about April. Um, or maybe it's about a confidence level. What is your confidence level? So the banding, maybe you want to get a past three months view and you know that your costs are going to increase by 15% because of you know some new project work or something like that. You can see these forecasts and also in the categories where those increases will be. Reservations, of course, very key for everybody. We have an extensive set of reservation information here, um, really understanding how on the EA side, for example, you've procured your reservations. Um, has it been a one-off? Um, are you uh, uh, buying it for a subscription or is it a particular device? All that kind of relevant information, how much of your EA, EARI is left or CSP, both supported. Um, you can see here these terms have been bought on one year. Uh, you've got one resource assigned here. You've got four assigned there. Um, you can see it's part of that uh, particular RI reservation. Um, and you can see the monthly costs in these areas that you can drill into. Also, while you're on the platform, we'll tell you who actually procured that service, not just who the administrator is. So if you're in procurement, you know who bought it. You can always phone them and understand why this is happening. Um, and then there'll be very simple screens to show you ups and downs, you know, why, what is, there's been an 88 um, resource change on that particular month. You can drill into it, have a look at it. Um, you might want to see your marketplace costs, for example, really difficult to understand from a billing perspective. Um, right here, you can go and see, or we don't have any here because in this demo environment um, is not an EA environment, um, but you don't see all of your marketplace costs in that there, or activity logs, understanding who's been adding, removing um, different services, deleted. Um, of course, these are initiated are, are, are masked over here, but you can see um, by user down here. So this particular admin, what have they done? They've deleted disks or this particular admin has maybe done X, Y, Z. So next steps, of course, you understand the procurement, you understand your billing, you know how, which businesses go to. We then have an extensive suite around cost optimization. Um, and here what we focused on is the, um, the views that Microsoft recommend as well, they've got a 10 point action plan. Um, they will give you some you know, areas that you can focus on, um, but typically these are the areas here. So it could be on reserved instances, hybrid benefit, of course, applicable to EA, um, right sizing, deallocating, deleting. It's not just us recommending to you how to right size. It's also giving you some, some risk options. You know, when you're looking at right sizing, Maybe you want to not just look at CPU utilization below 5%. You want to be a little bit more aggressive. And, you know, we're a bit short on cash for the next six months. Let's go and look at resources above 15%. Or leveraging that business capability that we have in the platform. Let me go and understand and be a bit more aggressive on saves in my QA and dev environments or in my test environments. Zombie resources uh, is a great term that's being adopted lately. You know, abandoned disks, things that are just not being used anymore. Um, storage, there's a lot of opportunities there. You can drill down, drill down, drill down and understand maybe these areas don't need that top most expensive um, SSD managed disk and it could really go down to standard managed disks. Um, and, 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 and you get that across SQL. Uh, reserved instances, of course, when we looked at reserved instances, we will tell you where the opportunities lie. Um, where you could reserve them more. And um, you could see here, for example, monthly cost without RI and with RI. Um, so you could save 1,067 pounds here moving to uh, um, RI in this case, right? So 
a lot of areas on the reserved instances side. Um, if I look at idle and oversized services, I get views in here. I can start seeing where those idle services are. I can drill into them, have a look at them, and those are the resources that are idle. Let me task my engineers to go and look at them. And of course, um, at the top, you can filter on any of these at any stage. You might want to look at a VM resizing plan. I mentioned I'm, I'm, I want to look at up to 26%. And you can start seeing how much money you can save when you're looking at up to 26% in these different categories. Or UAT dev workloads, leveraging that business system. I want to see this just for my test and UAT platform. Um, I could be saving, you know, 95 pounds. Of course, it, it's a small demo environment. These, these end up being thousands and ten thousands and hundreds of thousands of pounds, depending on the size of your environment. Um, but I can see I can leverage and look at LRS snapshots, uh, disk, et cetera, et cetera. So an extensive suite of cost savings um, as part of the platform. And last but not least to mention, we have a whole series of risk and governance on Azure. Um, on the governance side, you can look at all your regulatory information. Are you compliant to different ISO standards? Um, on the infrastructure and security side, we get this 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 baby kickstarted. Um, you've got networks, you've got groups, you've got security groups, which IP addresses have been exposed, um, rollback, you know, which administrators are doing what type of work. Um, you may want to look at it from a resources perspective and say, right, have I got a particular um, area? So this subnet has actually got two VNets assigned against it. I know getting quite technical, but why have I got two VNets assigned against this particular subnet? Um, and what are the virtual machines and the network interfaces and that around there? So you can do a lot of governance type work in there or as um, or if you want to look at the governance side itself um, you can then look at for example as your policies that are in place um, regulatory compliance um, so yeah this goes quite extensively you want to look at a zero cis or you want to look at um, hyper fed ramp NIST, iso 27001 you know what is failing on iso 27001 and again you might want to sort this and filter this by um, by different categories like high risk, low risk, medium risk, um, by regulatory standard names, um, and and different kinds of areas you can get into. You've got a secure score to go and look at. Um, extensive suite in here, and you can right click, drill down. So it really helps you understand risk. It helps you understand governance. You've got independent governance. Again, no right access required to the Microsoft world. And I think, Dan, that's about what I wanted to cover. Um, it is a fly through. As I mentioned, there's well over 200 dashboards. We've just touched on them, um, but there is an extensive suite to go over. So I'll flick you just back to um, that side of it and take you into Q&A. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thanks, Harold. And um, really appreciate you going through the, uh, the demonstration there. Um, Guys, as you can see, fairly uh, comprehensive set of capabilities across both 365 and Azure. Um, and it's probably important to note that um, the quantum platform underpins a, a huge amount of the services we deliver here at Bytes. Um, if you didn't get the opportunity to check it out, um, myself and Chris Hibbert ran a separate track on our, our Cloud Essentials proposition, um, which is effectively the service layer to quantum and how we help customers achieve savings um, and the level of governance across both 365 and Azure. So if you're interested, please do go and, and check that out. Um, but for now, um, we'll move straight into uh, the Q&A um, and we look forward to answering your questions very shortly.